So this is the 220 volt socket to which I have connected my newly made DC motor speed controller. Its output wires are red and are connected to my DC machine. See? And with the help of the belt and pulley system, see this machine is connected to my generator. And finally it is time to turn it on and connect some load for testing purposes. So before turning the setup on, let's do the connections of the multimeter to check the generated voltage and accordingly set the speed of the motor. Let's turn it on. So here we have a generated voltage of 6 volts. Seems like we will have to double the speed. But before setting the knob to that exact value, let's do some load testing because I want to perform the acceleration test. Turning it on. So here I'm going to use this 12 volts 100 watts bulb for acceleration testing. Accelerating. Now to increase up the generator running speed there are two methods. First we can either increase the speed from the controller or we can invert the pulley for a different gear ratio. So I'm going to invert the pulley in this one. And it's done. Finally, placing the belt same as before. Okay, nice. So let's find out our new voltage, turning it on. You can see that the new voltage is 8.5 volts DC. So pretty good at the start, at the minimum. And now we can easily achieve 12 volts. So let's increase the RPM. So 10.5 volts was the maximum that it could do because the belts were flapping way too much and it started making contact with the boundary. So I have replaced uh, the old belt with a new one. It is much more tighter. So let's hope it works and restart the test. It's at zero, turning it on. Seven point six. And we have 12 volts. Even after using such a tight belt, it is still flapping too much. But at least we have achieved 12 volts. So we can easily connect an inverter to convert it to 220 volts. So here I'm going to use this 12 volts, 1500 watts inverter. Now, although it is 1500 watts, it can handle a peak value of around 3000 watts. Let me give you a close up. See 1500 watts and peak of 3000 and these are the input wires point input for this positive and negative and uh, here are the cooling fans these two it's quite big and uh, that's the display unit AC output voltage DC input voltage and uh, the AC output pin out and this is for remote control I have that and alarm and power light now I have already done the polarity check and uh, if you are going to do any such project make sure that you do the polarity check because in most cases you are going to damage your inverter if it is not reverse protected.
Now I'm going to show you this input and output because of which I'm taking this angle. Let's turn it on. Okay. Turning it on. And here we have around low voltage. I think it's low voltage alarm. Let's increase the RPM. Why is it showing an alarm? Again. Oh, it's overload. More power is needed. Starting it. Yo, and here we have 220 volts and our inverter is successfully on. And now I can connect my 220 volts appliances. So let's start with connecting my 220 volts testing board. Should be fine. Starting with this 9 watts LED bulb, just for starting purpose. With this, we will know that the inverter has started. So turning the setup on, set zero and... And here we have the, oh, why did it turn off more? Now it should be good. Okay, yes, now it is working. So let's increase the RPM a little bit because once I'm going to place more load, then it is going to drop the voltage and my inverter is going to turn off. So let's increase it beforehand. Belt is flapping way too much. I'm going to need some side guiders, but let's do the test quickly. Another LED bulb. And this is a 60 watts bulb incandescent. Cool, right? Finally, my drill machine. Okay. And Now I'm going to test my jigsaw, okay, turning it on,
so it even powered my jigsaw. The setup is working quite nice. Turning it off. On. It takes some time for the inverter to turn on. 